In classical physics, light was considered to have wave nature. Light is a form of electromagnetic radiation and electromagnetic radiation consists of oscillating electrical and magnetic fields that are mutually perpendicular and perpendicular to the direction of propagation. The term wave nature implies that it should have a wavelength, a frequency and a speed with which it is propagating. This image shows how the electromagnetic spectrum is commonly represented. We are only familiar with visible light, x-rays, infrared and all the others. These differ from each other in their frequency and wavelength but all of them travel at the speed of light in a vacuum. An important thing to note is that wavelength and frequency are inversely proportional. Increasing the frequency decreases the wavelength and vice versa. They are related by speed is equal to frequency into wavelength where speed is the speed of light in a vacuum and its value is 3 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second. Gamma rays have the highest frequency and therefore the shortest wavelength whereas radio waves have the lowest frequency and hence the longest wavelength. All of these firmly reinforce the long-held belief in the wave nature of electromagnetic radiation. In addition, several experiments proved the wave nature of light such as reflection and refraction. However, conclusive evidence for wave nature is provided by interference and diffraction. The most famous experiment to demonstrate interference was Young's double slit experiment. In Young's double slit experiment, light was incident on a metal plate with two small slits. Several bright and dark bands were observed on the screen on the other side. The bright bands were due to constructive interference in which the crest of a wave overlaps with the crest of another wave and the trough overlaps with the trough resulting in higher crests and deeper troughs. The dark bands were due to destructive interference which is when the crest of a wave overlaps with the trough of another effectively cancelling each other out. If wave nature were absent, only the bands directly aligned with the slits would appear and the rest of the screen would be dark. Similar to interference providing evidence of wave nature of light, we also have diffraction. Diffraction is the phenomena in which light bends around a corner or bends around an object that has a size similar to the wavelength of light. Diffraction also gave similar bright and dark bands as interference with a major difference being that in diffraction we have interference of a single wave with itself instead of multiple waves in interference. However, several other experiments in the 20th century provided undeniable proof that light had particle nature experiments such as black body radiation. A black body gives out radiation in the entire electromagnetic spectrum. Based on wave theory, black body radiation from any black body should have led to a significant amount of energy at shorter wavelengths and very less amount of energy at long wavelengths. However, it was observed that for a black body at any temperature, the wavelength corresponding to maximum intensity is not necessarily the shortest wavelength but somewhere in between and the wavelengths that are shorter or longer carry very little amount of energy. This could only be explained by adopting the particle nature of light. The particles of light are called photons and the energy of each photon is inversely proportional to its wavelength and the energy carried by a spectrum of the black body radiation was dependent on the number of photons emitted in that region of spectrum. In this particular graph, as we can see that when the black body is at a temperature of 3000 Kelvin, the intensity peaks at around 1000 nanometer. What that means is that even though photons across the spectrum are emitted, Yet, the radiation emitted by a black body at 3000 Kelvin consists mostly of photons of 1000 nanometer 
and there are fewer photons that correspond to very short wavelengths or very long wavelengths and therefore contribute very little to the black body radiation. The second unquestionable evidence that light behaves like a particle is the photoelectric effect. When light with a short enough wavelength shines on a metal surface, it causes the metal to release electrons right away. But if the light has a longer or insufficient wavelength, no electrons are released no matter how bright the light is or how long it shines. The surprising part is that photoelectric effect depends only on the frequency or wavelength of light and not on its intensity or brightness. If light were just a wave, even long wavelength light should eventually give electrons enough energy to escape. But experiments showed that only light with a short enough wavelength can release electrons instantly and longer wavelengths are unable to eject electrons at all. This must mean that light must be made of tiny energy packets called photons. A single photon must have enough energy to knock out an electron. If it doesn't, no electrons are released, no matter how many photons hit the surface or how long the light shines. Therefore, even a dim light of sufficient wavelength is sufficient to eject electrons and cause photoelectric effect, whereas even if we have a bright light shining for a long time on the metal surface, no electrons are ejected. In conclusion, we had two different sets of observations. On one hand, phenomena like black body radiation and photoelectric effect provide strong evidence for the particle nature of light, while interference and diffraction demonstrate its wave-like behavior. These findings led to the understanding that light or electromagnetic radiation has a dual nature. It exhibits both wave and particle characteristics. When interacting with matter, light behaves as a particle and during propagation, it predominantly shows wave-like properties. The realization that light, which was traditionally understood as a wave, could also exhibit particle-like behavior led scientists to consider the reverse possibility that particles may also display wave-like behavior. This idea became known as the wave nature of particles and we will explore it further in upcoming videos where we discuss the de Broglie wavelength.